In this video, we work with the second derivative test. In particular, we're going to see a couple of exam type questions. These are the types of exercises you definitely want to know when studying your course on calculus. Let's go ahead and get started. As a first example, we'll consider the function defined by y is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 36x plus 1. And we're asked four questions. The first question A is to find dy dx, the derivative. Second question B, we are asked to find the x coordinates of any stationary points this function has. Question C, we'll need to find the second derivative. And finally, question D will be asked to use the second derivative test to determine the nature of any stationary points found in question B. So let's go ahead and get started. For question A, we need to differentiate this function, and we do this using the power rule for differentiation. That would look something like this. dy dx will equal to 3 times 2x to the power of 2 minus 2 times 3 times x to the power of 1 minus 36 plus 0. We carry on a bit. That leads us to the derivative 6x squared minus 6x minus 36. And there we go. We've got our expression for our derivative dy dx. The next question, question B, we have to find the coordinates, or rather the x-coordinates, of any stationary points this function has. Now, to find stationary points, we need to solve the equation dy dx equals to zero. In other words, we need to find the values of x at which the gradient of the curve is horizontal. Those would be stationary points. So this will equal to zero if and only if 6x squared minus 6x minus 36 equals to zero. Dividing throughout by 6, we, we find x squared minus x minus 6 equals to zero. And we can solve this quadratic equation by factoring. Indeed, we can see that this is equal to x minus 3 times x plus 2 equals to zero. If you're not comfortable factoring this quadratic, don't worry. You can still solve this using the quadratic formula, of course. This leads to two solutions to this equation. We have x equals to 3 and x equals to negative 2. Since this has two solutions, it means that our function has two stationary points, one of which has an x-coordinate of 3, the other has an x-coordinate of negative 2. Now, question C we have to find the second derivative. So our starting point will be the first derivative, dy dx, and we found that expression in question A, and that was 6x squared minus 6x minus 36. So differentiating this, we find the following. The second derivative will be equal to 2 times 6x minus 6. That second derivative is equal to 12 x minus 6. Job done. Last question, question D. We have to use the second derivative test to determine the nature of the stationary points we found in question B. So remember, we found two stationary points, one with an x-coordinate of 3, the other with an x-coordinate of negative 2. So what we're going to do is calculate the value of the second derivative, that's this expression here, when x equals to 3, and then when x equals to negative 2. So let's do that. When x equals to 3, we'll have the following. The second derivative will equal to 12 times 3 minus 6. That's equal to 36 minus 6. And finally, we can state that the second derivative, therefore, is equal to 30. Now, since 30 is positive, this tells us that the second derivative is positive at that stationary point. Because it's positive, it means that the curve is concave upward, so it's doing something like that. And the stationary point, therefore, must be a minimum. So we can go ahead and write that this is a local minimum. There we go. The first stationary point is a local minimum. At x equals to negative 2, we do the same thing. We're going to calculate the second derivative, so d squared y dx squared equals to 12 times negative 2 minus 6. That's equal to negative 24 minus 6. And of course, that second derivative, therefore, at negative 2 is equal to negative 30. And now, in this case, 30 is 
sorry, negative 30 is negative, of course. So we're dealing with a local maximum. Because the second derivative is negative, it means the curve at this stationary point is concave downward. So it's doing something like that. So our stationary point must be a local maximum. Let's look at another example. As a second example, we're going to consider the function defined by f of x equals to x plus 4 over x. And again, we're asked four questions, a, b, c, and d. The first being to find the first derivative f dash of x. Question b being to find the x-coordinates of any stationary points this function has. Question c, we need to find the second derivative f dash dash of x. And question d, we'll use the second derivative test to determine the nature of the stationary points found in part b. So let's go ahead and do this. The first question, a, we need to find f dash of x. So let's just rewrite f of x. f of x was x plus 4 over x. Now, the derivative, therefore, is f dash of x equals to 1 minus 4 over x squared. Now, I'm differentiating this quite fast. There's a well-known result which I would strongly encourage you to know off by heart. The derivative of 1 over x is equal to negative 1 over x squared. If you don't know that result off by heart already, make sure to learn it now. It comes up all the time. Now, we have the derivative f dash of x. So question b, we have to find the x-coordinates of any stationary points this function has. Well, to find the stationary points, we need to solve the equation f dash of x equals to 0. In other words, we need to determine where the first derivative is equal to 0. Now, this will equal to 0 if and only if 1 minus 4 over x squared equals to 0. And to solve this, we need to write everything on the same denominator. So multiplying throughout by x squared lead, leads us to x squared minus 4 over x squared equals to 0. And the only way that this will equal to 0 if, if, is if the numerator equals to 0. That is, x squared minus 4 equals to 0. This leads us to x squared equals to 4, and therefore x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4. That's x equals to plus or minus 2. So there are two solutions to this equation, x equals to negative 2 and x equals to 2. This function, therefore, has two stationary points. Now, moving on to the next question, question c, we have to find the second derivative, f dash dash of x. So, starting from our first derivative, f dash of x, which, remember, was 1 minus 4 over x squared, we can start by rewriting the second term here as a negative power of x. That would look like this, f dash of x equals to 1 minus 4 times x to the power of negative 2. Now that we've done this, we can use the power rule for differentiation to find the second derivative. And that would be the following, f dash dash of x is equal to 0 minus negative 2 times 4 times x to the power of negative 2 minus 1. That's equal to, so that's negative negative 2, that's 2 times 4 times x to the power of negative 3. Finally, we can state that the second derivative is equal to 8 times x to the power of negative 3, which is the same thing as 8 over x cubed. Done. Finally, we move on to the last question. Use the second derivative test to determine the nature of the stationary points found in question B. So I'll just write little d here. There are two stationary points, the first at x equals to negative 2. So let's calculate f dash dash of x when x equals to negative 2. So we're going to be using this expression here that we just found. And at, at, at negative 2, that's f dash dash of negative 2 equals to 8 over negative 2 cubed. That's equal to 8 over negative 8, which equals to negative 1. And since the second derivative here is negative, this means that we're dealing with a maximum point or a local maximum point on the curve. Remember, because the second derivative is negative, it means that the curve must be concave downwards. Therefore, it can only be a maximum. On to the next stationary point at x equals to 2. We calculate the second derivative again, f dash dash at 2 equals to 8 over 2 cubed. 
that's equal to 8 over 8, which equals to 1. And in this case, it's greater than 0. So, this means we're dealing with a local minimum point. And there we have it. That's how we can use the second derivative test to determine the nature of stationary points. I hope that helps.